So he's blown astray, and we really don't know where these uh, places were that he uh, was uh, next to visit, but they have been more or less uh, roughly located in various places. The first place is going to be here uh, on the African coast, the land of the Lotus Eaters. Now, I couldn't uh, find a representation of the land of the Lotus Eaters, but I did find a lovely little piece that sets up the mood of the land of the Lotus Eaters. Namely, it's a place of luxury and dreamlike, uh, just enjoying the pleasures, the sensuous and lovely pleasures of the present moment. But the Lotus Eaters were eaters of psychedelic plants, the plants that uh, bring us visions and uh, conduct us into the visionary world. And so what we have done here has been to cross the threshold, so to say, that same threshold that our Navajo hero crossed when he passed through uh, White Sands Boy. We are at that threshold now. And the first figure whom Odysseus is going to meet is a figure known as the Cyclops a one-eyed monster who is exactly in the role of White Sands Boy and represents the threat of the uh, threshold crossing. Now this is a cave on the west coast, on the east coast of uh, Italy that some have suggested as having been the inspiration of the cave of the uh, Cyclops. The story there is a very well-known one. Odysseus goes ashore with 12 men to see uh, where they are. And they go into uh, this great big cave. And in the cave, they find a uh, flock of sheep uh, and uh, pails of milk and, and cheese, uh, great balls of cheese and so forth. So they know they're in the home of a shepherd of some kind. And then presently, the shepherd comes in, and it's a great giant with one eye in the center of his forehead. Now, he is the son of the god Poseidon, and he is the guardian of Poseidon's realm, namely the realm of the mysterious uh, experiences that are to come. The uh, Poseidon uh, son here, uh, uh, Polyphemus is his name, the Cyclops, uh, picks up two of the men and eats them. Uh, well, they know now they're in trouble. And uh, then for dinner, he eats uh, two more. Well, Odysseus uh, has an idea, and the idea is the, to take a great big beam that they find there, uh, and while the um, Cyclops is asleep, they sharpen the beam and um, make it hard in the fire. And then, having given him wine, and he never having had wine before, having drunk it, had, having become drunk, they have him now at a great disadvantage. And there he's lying, asleep, drunk, and they drive that beam right into his eye. And we see here a representation of that act. And here is another very dramatic representation of the driving of the beam into the eye of the Cyclops. Well, when he had first encountered the, the men in the cave and started eating them and so forth, uh, he had asked Odysseus, who are you? And Odysseus had answered, I am no man. This is an important spiritual motif. He has divested himself of his worldly fame, of his secular life. He is now no man. He has left behind his worldly life, just as our heroes in passing, uh, our Navajo heroes in passing um, White Sands Boy had left behind the whole world of their uh, worldly life and were going on a spiritual adventure. Well, when the beam went through the Cyclops' eye, he started howling in pain. And uh, his uh, friends and colleagues outside, the other Cyclops, he said, well, what's the matter in there? Who's hurting you? And his answer was, no man. Well, they said, well, then shut up. It's your private problem, and we're not going to worry about it. Uh, stop uh, dreaming and having these nightmares. Uh, the next problem, however, was that after his eye had been driven out, he said to himself, I'm going to get these guys anyhow, and he sets himself at the exit to the cave, and they had to pass by him to get out. Odysseus, of many devices, thought of a device. He took three sheep of the flock that were there, tied them together, and put one of his men under the sheep. The Cyclops had eaten six of his men already, so there were only six left. So the three sixes are 18, he set up 18 sheep this way, and his six men got out. And then he himself got under the belly of the great 
big ram of the herd, and here we see him under the ram's belly uh, on the way out. And the cyclops at the gate of the cave simply felt these things as they passed. He said, oh, my sheep are going out to graze, and so the men got away. Now, there's an important point here. The ram in this period represented the sun. He was a representation of the sun god. And so our hero, Odysseus, who has divested himself of his secular character, has identified himself with the solar power, the sun god, so to say. And in that way, he has passed through the first threshold.